The MSI Pro Z790P Wi-Fi motherboard is designed to accommodate Intel's new 13th gen CPUs. While I have reviewed a few boards in the past few weeks, some with Intel sockets and some with AMD ones, the new MSI Pro motherboard is probably the simplest and the most straight to the point board I have used. It just gets the job done and I think MSI is aiming for that with its Pro Series range. There's no RGB here at all, no CMOS display, and very little customization on offer too. You'll just slap it into your PC and switch it on. This board also retails for 10,999 Rand which is quite steep for a bare minimum board like this. It does come with some of the latest PC tech on the market though, including PCIe Gen 5. However, like most other boards, it doesn't come with Gen 5 support for the SSD, so you'll have to sacrifice your slot you would usually use for the GPU in order to use a special PCIe M2 Gen 5 card edge connector. Again, this isn't really a gaming board, so MSI likely thought of what they were doing before they decided to leave out the Gen 5 M.2 slot. Alongside the board, MSI sent through two 13th gen Intel CPUs to test out. I got the Core i9-13900K and the Core i5-13600K. I've already covered the i9 in another Asus Maximus gaming motherboard video, so make sure you check that out. I'll leave the link in the description below. I also need to make a disclaimer for this content. MSI sent the board for me to test out and the CPUs to benchmark. I don't have a relationship with Intel due to a number of underlying issues in my region with the brand. In fact, everything I have done to this point related to Intel has been through a PC brand struggling to get CPUs. Intel just doesn't really know what they're doing here and it has been a real challenge to work with them. Everything you see in this video is also going back to MSI. The MSI Pro Z790P Wi-Fi board is quite simple in its design. The board boasts a black color palette with a few extended heatsinks scattered across the top. The main M.2 slot packs an additional heatsink to keep things cool, but you can also use the other slots if you already have a heatsink on your SSD. There's a chunky VRM heatsink on the upper MOS that will help dissipate heat and other thermal pads around the CPU enclosure to help provide stable performance. There's also one last heatsink on the chipset to provide dust buildup and keep things cool. When it comes to the ports and the specs, this is what this MSI Z790P Wi-Fi board packs. I took advantage of the Asus Helios case I had around my house from the previous Maximus review I did. I installed the MSI Pro Z790P Wi-Fi port into that case. I also used the Ryogen 2 cooler. I know it is probably sacrilege to use all this Asus stuff on the MSI board, but I honestly don't own any MSI tech to use, and the Ryogen 2 cooler has a display panel that is nice to showcase in video form. The full specs of this build include the following. I installed the R5 CPU first into the board. I then installed an SSD by removing the heatsink and closed it up. Installing the board was easy enough. I placed it into the case, screwed in some screws, plugged in all the wires and it was good to go. 
I did have a few issues with the board at first, it refused to boot and it gave me an unsupported processor error. I tried to reinstall Windows and that didn't work. Turned out that the BIOS needed an update in order to work on these new chipsets. It also doesn't help that MSR only gives you a disk in the box and not a USB with any sort of BIOS update on it. I'm not sure who uses disks these days but you'll need to have a notebook or another PC around so you can download the latest BIOS update. If you don't, you're not going to be able to use your new 13th gen CPU on this board. Once up and running, I ran some tests on both CPUs. I started with the 13th gen Core i5. The CPU comes with a combined core count of 14. There are 6 performance cores and 8 efficiency cores. The P cores have a clock speed of anywhere between 3.5GHz and 5.1GHz. The E cores have a clock speed between 26 and 3.9GHz. It handled its test quite well. I measured 96 degrees Celsius during some stress tests and the CPU ranged from 125 watts of base power and maxed out at 180 watts during testing. Average use started around 160 watts. I also saw the base clock speed hit 3.8 GHz on the multi-core tests and a turbo boosted to 5.1 GHz on the performance cores when pushed to the limit. The test results showed the following. I then replaced the Core i5 with the Core i9 CPU and the results were definitely impressive. Of course these results came at the cost of cooling as once again I was greeted by the 100 degrees Celsius mark on the CPU. This i9-3900K includes 24 cores, there are 8 performance cores and 16 efficiency cores. The P cores boast a clock speed of 3GHz to 5.8GHz and the E cores have a clock speed between 2.2 and 4.3GHz. The test showed the following results. The i9 is a beast of a chip but at the same time it eats through a lot of power. It could use anything up to 253 max TDP. However the 12th gen model wasn't far behind and it used 240 watts. It is just something important to keep in mind when looking at the chip. It gets hot so you'll also need a decent cooling system and it uses a chunk of power. The two chips performed as expected on this MSI Pro Z790 P Wi-Fi board. The i5 is definitely more approachable of the two thanks to the milder performance and power requirements. Of course the board is well, a motherboard. I can't really recommend it for 11,000 RAM because there's so many better options with flashier features and more PCIe Gen 5 slots available. This is a business orientated board so it gets the job done. But if you're looking for something more versatile maybe look elsewhere. It is a good board but it's not 11,000 RAM good. So that's my experience testing out the MSI Pro Z790P Wi-Fi board. Are you looking to pick this board up? Let us know down below. Thanks for watching and please do consider liking and subscribing for future content. I'll also post links to the recent CPU video reviews we've done in recent weeks. Also visit www.glitch.online for more gaming and tech news and reviews. Until next time, farewell.